Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so actually, for, for really wheels, um, okay, let's just get started. Um, it's really, really warm in here. This is Tracy Evans. Uh, most people call me Jam. My name's actually Jeffrey McGuire. We founded a company called Open Strategy Partners a couple of years ago, and um, we help I'm not getting my speaker notes, eh? Do we need speaker notes for this? I don't think so. All right, okay. We'll, we'll fake it. Okay, so communication strategy to build digital experiences that connect. Um, open strategy partners, <clears throat> we help technology organizations. Um, uh, we like to translate between complexity, things that you build and deliver, and, and stories about business value. For example, um, a lot of us have a great idea that we know um, adds a lot of value to the world and our lives, but we have a hard time explaining it. That's the sort of thing that we do. And um, we have a deep background in open source, so um, we can come in and have uh, higher value conversations with you about your technologies than other agencies who can also choose nice words and make pretty pictures. Um, Tracy has a really deep background in business and is a hotshot MBA. She's the smart one. I'm the one. Um, I'm the pretty one, obviously. <laughs> um, we came together. I came off of um, starting as the 18th employee at Acquia. And after nine years there, um, I had a lot of ideas about how to talk with developers, how to build communication, um, and so on. And I did several hundred interviews and other publications along the way. So communication and actual education and structure and strategy. And that turned into Open Strategy Partners, where now there's about eight of us on most days. And, um, <clears throat> and we're having a good time with it so far. We've got a bunch of clients and projects. So we're going to talk about how not to connect. Um, we're going to talk about a thing that we call authentic communication. We're going to talk about our strategic communication foundation and how you can use that as a tool set, um, some specific things uh, within that, and then how that turns into a better way to connect. Because we only have a couple more minutes, um, we're going to skip all the details. We're going to talk fast. Anybody who has any questions, we're super happy to hang out in the hallway afterwards. Um, we are going to be at the Splash Awards tonight. We're going to be at the karaoke party tomorrow, and we're going to be here all week anyway, so just just find us, okay? And we'd love to talk. It's openstrategypartners.com, obviously. So how not to connect? Who in this room is a developer? Right? So a great communication strategy does not start by choosing your version of Drupal and how you're going to set up the configuration and is it going to be headless and what modules you're going to use, right? Feels obvious, but like that's what we actually care about, right? You know, now I get to use this thing or I get to build a new thing, right? Mm, but the web's a communication medium, and we really have to think about some other things. It also doesn't start like this, right? Which is the stuff that some other of us really, really love. Um, so Open Strategy Partners is definitely not about marketing bullshit bingo. Um, so if it's not the technical stuff and it's not this marketing stuff, what is it when you're thinking about um, building a communication strategy. It is a, it is, um, we think that you need to communicate the right stories, the right information about what you do, what you build, to the people who need to know it and connect with them so that you can grow. So uh, growing could mean a lot of different things. Are you an open source project? You need more people to adopt and use your your product. Are you a company building open source solutions? Maybe you have to explain to potential clients why a free and open solution um, allows you to do better work for them. Maybe you're an uh, open source association and so on. Whatever growth means for you, do you need a partner network? Do you need more revenue? Do you need employees? There are different stories that you're going to tell about what you do to get there. And <clears throat> one of the things that uh, I brought to the company that we've developed a lot since then is what we call the authentic communication framework. And we talk about communicating with empathy, clarity, and trust. And when you use these and do these, um, they build on each other. And it becomes a very virtuous circle. So talking with empathy, um, it comes, all, uh, comes up a lot in society now, a lot in sort of new models of corporate government, governance and management and so on. But um, essentially, there are... Uh, 
when, when on a practical level, when we're talking about building communication about what you do, okay, how many of you were developers in the room? How many of you have a business background? Tracy, put your hand up. Yeah, right. So you people, and you especially, Tracy, right? You get really excited about market analysis and target audiences and, and, and segmentation. I hate that word. <laughs> segmentation and clustering, even, even worse, right? But that's really amazing, exciting stuff. Now, developers, developers, how do you feel about this stuff? Uh, huh? Uh -huh. Is it a, a solid? Uh -huh. Right? But... As open source practitioners, we, most of us, uh, uh, we really care about what we do, right? And a lot of us come from really idealistic backgrounds, and we're not just using technology for technology's sake, right? We want to make the world a better place. We have a vision that we want to realize. So who in the room cares about solving a problem that other people need solved? Good, right? And people should know about that you're solving that problem, right? And you should probably know who else is solving that and how you're solving it better, right? So communicating with empathy, these are exactly the same things for the business um, personas and for the open source developer personas, right? So when we, on a practical level, this, this empathy thing lets us choose different words and different paradigms for getting across the same story and for connecting, right, with whomever you need to connect with. <clears throat> when we talk about clarity, we talk about making things that are clear to read, but we also talk about using logic. We also talk about saying what we can't do right now, because honesty, what does honesty do? In, in our world, honesty also really, really helps build trust. So we make, we are very clear about who we are and what we do, and what we can't do, and we produce it as well as we can as communications professionals. Um, and um, then we talk about trust, and we feel that once you start talking about trust, this thing starts to build on itself, right? So try not to use insider language that other people aren't going to understand. Try and be as simple as possible. Be technically accurate at all times, right? For God's sake, because that's like de developers generally, we feel we're allergic to marketing, and it's mostly because we read, we read about vaporware in inaccurate and then, you know, nonsense words, right? And that turns us off immediately. And if we are trying to help our clients get something into your minds, <clears throat> we can't risk that. We've developed a thing we call the trust signal audit. And this is around if you have an open source project, this is how this is focused. Um, having these things, we feel now, pic picture trying to choose a module for your project in the Drupal, uh, in, the, in the repository, right? You're going to see how many times it's been installed, how active the issue queue is, and so on. Those are trust signals. So for a project, we want to make sure that we have a clear code of conduct. We want to um, make sure that there's a contribution guideline. We might look at how many times it's downloaded, what's the license. Who thinks I'm, like, that it's pointless to measure that you need a, a clearly declared license? Because we all know that, right? I consulted on a project that was five years old at the time and a 300 million euro investment from the European Union that had not declared its license. So all of the corporate contributors could take their code back. It wasn't really open source and it was a huge mistake, right? So trust signals, um, we think about these a lot and this builds an ecosystem around your projects, around your products and so on um, that lets people trust what you're talking about in the rest of your communications. And of course, these are all communication exercises as well. At a strategic communications level, Tracy will now tell you about our framework. So I guess everybody here in this room can appreciate the value of starting with a framework, right? Um, and we do the same with communication. And a lot of these topics should look familiar to you in, in planning uh, your communication. Um, one of the... and, and and this framework is an important base to start from. So aligning all of your ideas and plans around mostly these topics um, are going to give you a solid foundation uh, to better connect with your audience. Um, most of these should look familiar. Um, I think a, a piece that's unique to, to OSP is uh, the value map that I'm just going to tell you a little bit about. Um, <coughs> essentially, the the value map is an inventory or a, or a collection of all of the value statements, all of the features of a product. This value map helps us 
be more accurate because we we do some background work, we get into the details, we sort out what exactly, you know, what your product does, um, what it is, what it does, and the value that it delivers. And the way that we do that is by having this collection of value statements. And um, the value statements uh, result, this might be... So any given value statement for the data geeks uh, of that any given value statement is is actually a triplet of a feature and what we call an activity we could also call it a method or a delivery mode or a lot of other things but you have a feature and an activity and a benefit right so any given feature can feed up into one to n business benefits right delivered by an activity so once we so there's benefits in the center and activities around this pie and and that benefit and that activity are connected with any with any number of features in the middle there so then every one of those triplets we produce a value statement which is a very compact dull not well written statement about what it is what it does and what value it delivers and as soon as we have that you can see that we can turn that into a database do map produce functions on it to produce different things and we can start to add layers about like whom we need to talk with and if it's for a different persona, then we talk about it in a different way and so on, right? And then a CMS has six or 700 of these. Um, middle complex um, design system tool that we're working with called Knapsack um, has about 150. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a... So we take these sort of atomic level features, um, put them into value statements, and then we organize them across different uh, feature areas. Um, is what we call them, and so this uh, this image here might represent, um, you know, eight different feature areas of a of a given product. And uh, I think Jamar has already explained um, much, this yeah. idea of a value statement and what that is, and that it, we take essentially the atomic level feature, which is usually what the the technical side uh, cares about. We connect it to the area or the activity. Um, that uh, where that brings its value and then the benefit is the positive result and that's usually where what the business people that that is usually the layer that helps translate the value of the technical feature into what that means for the business person right so then there's a huge there's a huge um, like there's a huge picture here and we'll just paint you a sketch and then you uh, at the geek level, we care about the individual features and how things are put together and the smallest atomic units usually, but we have trouble connecting what we're doing to the story of the value that's being delivered and what the business person might want to spend money on, right? So with this mapped out, we can look at the features we're working on and start to understand what is what value we're delivering. And at the same time, we can create communication, you can create communication for the business persona saying, you can get this and this from our product and be like, yeah, sure you can. How do you do that? And we could say, well, boom, 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 and it's all documented, and it means your sales team is not spinning hot air, right? It means that you have something that's backed up by what, what your product is actually built as. The next step that we, that we take the value statements and the, and the value map is that we roll these up into uh, feature area positioning statements and then product level positioning statements. So we take these clusters and we collect them all into groups and we roll that up into a single, a single, a single statement um, about the product itself. And what this helps with is, you know, when you're, when you're talking about the high level value of a product, it's no longer based on buzzwords or, or, or fluff, it's actually based on this concrete, detailed technical analysis of your product. Right, and so your inside out communication and your outside in communication match and they, they, they both make sense. And then what we do is roll these clusters up in, and um, you know, if you have several products across uh, your, your product line, for example, the DDEV team and the DDEV local uh, might, be, might be one product and DDEV live is another uh, product, but then there's platform level features that you get out of using their entire tool chain, for right. example. Um, and you take those and roll them up into the brand level positioning statement. So, with a massive six minutes to go, 
<laughs> we talked about um, how not to start connecting. We talked a little bit about our tooling and, and, and one specific piece of the tool, a couple of specific pieces of, of our tooling, the value mapping and the trust signal audit. Um, so now let's just talk really, really briefly about how to connect. Because the value map gives us statements of, of, of functionality, statements of benefits to deliver that we can back up that are factual, right? It gives us a huge repository to then, once we've done all the other marketing work of figure out whom we're talking to, what they care about, how they're going to interact with, with, um, with us, right? We figured out how trustworthy the, 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 the project looks. We can, we can look at strategic narratives, which are like evergreen stories that you want to tell over and over again about what reliability, about uh, return on investment, wh whatever it is for you. Um, and then we do the work of making plans and, and creating channels, uh, uh, creating assets and, and, uh, and um, getting them out into the world. And, um, but this lets us do it in a way that connects with people. Um, so using empathy, clarity, and trust, plus doing a lot of hard homework to really, really get the facts out, lets us put this all together to help people communicate, connect, and grow. Any questions? And we have time for questions. Yes? How, where, where does my issue tracker fit in? Your issue tracker? Yeah. Is it a, is it a, is it a product? Is yeah. it a... Well, it's a trust signal. So if you're maintaining your... are creating or working on... Yeah. Where do they fit into the map? Oh, that's definitely a trust signal, right? Because if I see how, how, how often you're working on what you're doing and that you're taking care of people's issues. Well, but if, if an issue represents a feature because it starts out as a request and you write a test to it and you, you specify the feature, where does that fit into the component map that you had? Like, do you, do you actually use issues generated and feature requests written in an issue tracker ah. to create your maps? No. All right. We do, um, both in preparing this stuff and in a lot of the content we do, we do um, interview and workshop formats. Mm -hmm. So we like, we'll usually get a multidisciplinary team together, like a business person, a couple technical people, a marketing person, and workshop. Um, what do you think is great about your product? Works what's really well? What are the products? On paper. And yeah, on paper, on, we have Canvas tools for online workshops, yeah. So there's a lot of interviewing the people who are actually building it, right? But I think to expand on that, um, the idea is that so some of these methods are the way that we start to get a baseline, and then um, with every uh, with every product development, with every release, um, you need to go back and update the value map so that it stays, um, so that it's maintained along with all of your other documentation. So it should right. be um, treated in the same cycle as the rest of your documentation. Right. So so we we tell clients that this should be this is documentation. And that it, you know, it should be in your definition of done, just like updating every other, writing good release notes, and so on. And then it becomes a tool that, when you're planning a campaign, you're planning a specific number of assets. You can go in to the value map, filter it for a specific persona, a specific product area, a specific uh, problem space, um, and collect all of those features out of there, and make sure that that's built into your communication plan. Just for example. Uh, perhaps any practical examples of how the value map, uh, what kind of content goes in there, how, what degree of granularity, how specific or generic uh, do you want to be in each of those steps if you want to be in the value map? As specific as possible. Um, so <coughs> it, it does need to be as granular as is practical. Um, and uh, the reason for that is, um, you know, you might end up with a value map of a few hundred features that you'll never put in front of a client, you know, strip straight up here's, you know, overload them with, uh, with information. But for anybody that's creating marketing materials for your company, whether that's an agency or your internal team, um, you need a single source of truth and you need, um, a, and you need to have agreed upon language. Um, the inspiration for the value map was actually um, starting to work with a, a CMS project and trying to understand the space and seeing that um, Drupal was talking differently than uh, than Typo three was than talking and they were talking differently than uh, Adobe was and it was really difficult to understand and so and and seeing that and even within an existing organization I've had a lot of experience where um, the product team versus the developers versus uh, the marketing team were all talking about the product in very different ways. 
Um, and that makes it really challenging to have a co coherent, clear message going out to the public. And so, so at that that's... point, when you've done one or more multi-department workshops, the stakeholders eventually are all on the same page about at every single level what your product is, what it does, and what value it delivers. And all of a sudden, everybody's pulling, actually pulling in the same direction and aware of what's going on. And it can help you make a roadmap because if you then start to make a value map of your competition, then you can see what features you have and what they have. And are you a market leader defining a niche or are you following someone else? What language choices have they made? How do you build your communications? Do you prioritize one feature over another? It becomes, the data set becomes really, really powerful. And also to help you build your, your positioning, right? Because in the value map, you can clearly indicate what are, uh, what are table stakes versus what actually differentiate you from your competition and where you should focus some of your messaging around being a lot clearer. Yep. So we're out of time. Thank you so much for uh, coming on this race with us and um, see you around this week.